Welcome to the Home Builder Digital Marketing Podcast. Over 90% of today's home buyers start their buyer journey online. Here we talk with not only industry experts, but also your fellow home builder marketers to learn how you can succeed in our incredibly competitive digital world. And now, here are your hosts, Greg Bray and Kevin Weitzel. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of the Home Builder Digital Marketing Podcast. I'm Greg Bray with Blue Tangerine. And I'm Kevin Weitzel with Outhouse. And we are excited today to welcome to the show, Elisa Titus, the Director of Marketing at Shell Brothers. Welcome, Elisa. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Super happy to be here. Well, for those who haven't had a chance to meet you yet, we'd just like to start off with that quick introduction and help us to get to know you a little bit better. Sure. I am the Director of Marketing for Shell Brothers. We're a new home builder. Our home base is Delaware. I'm lucky enough to live in Rehoboth Beach and our office is in Rehoboth Beach. So we're just five minutes from the ocean. We have a division in Richmond, Virginia, and we also are launching a division right now as we speak in Nashville, Tennessee. So it's exciting times here at Shell Brothers. We're a production builder. We highly personalize our homes. Our average price point is about low sevens and we settle about 700 houses a year. So there's still land in Delaware that people can build on because 700 houses a year, that's a lot. It's a lot, yes. But that's why the expansion. Yeah, I mean, that's part of the reason we're expanding. I'm mean, we're definitely creeping westward and we're in primarily Sussex County, which is the coastal Delaware County here. So we've definitely been creeping west as time goes on. But, you know, everyone is fleeing cities right now, I feel like. And Delaware is certainly a great place to retire, which is typically what we have just recently with COVID, we're welcoming a lot of families who are now able to work from home. So, so if I can take a left hand turn, we're going to get to the point where I, I can see your smile already. So I already know you know this is coming. That's all the business you. We need to know something interesting personally about you that nobody will know unless they listen to this podcast. Personally about me. Okay, that's a tough one. Okay, well, so I I have a design degree, a fashion design degree. And I used to be a fashion designer and sell to like Macy's and Nordstrom and pretty much every major department store in the country in my former life. I had a showroom in New York City, traveled all over. Oh, that's a new one. Greg, isn't that a new one? We haven't heard anything like that before. We have not had a fashion designer on yet. I would have dressed up nicer if I'd known. (laughs) I'm not dressed that great today. That kind of makes an interesting segue. I mean, I know we'll get more into the marketing side, but what caused you to drive toward the marketing side of the home building industry and versus the design, interior, exterior design? Right. I mean, I honestly, Kevin, I totally fell into this position in a crazy way. I had retail stores up and down the East Coast. I had one in Rehoboth Beach for 17 years, and I knew my boss, Chris Shell, well, and his wife and his sister-in-law shopped in my store all the time. And, you know, retail game changed quite a bit five to seven years ago with the internet and all of that. No, (laughs) no. And so like my retail business was kind of winding down a little bit and I had some other opportunities, which I took. And one day out of the blue, Chris called me and was like, do you want to be my director of marketing? And I'm like, what? I don't know anything about the new home building business. You don't want me. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, right? And he's like, no, 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 I want you. And I'm like, looking at my husband and I'm super entrepreneurial and so is Chris. And I met him and I met like some top level execs who are now my peers and they super impressed me. And I was like, okay, sure. I'll, I'll be your director of marketing. You know, I knew nothing, which is cool and exciting when you're in your mid forties to learn a whole new career is something else. It's been really fun. And I I didn't know how much I would love the new home industry. I used to have a sewing factory. I think, you know, fashion design. And we had a factory with 220 employees at one point and made our own apparel. And the crazy thing I learned right away is like making things is making things is making things. Making clothing is actually not all that different than building houses because you have all the same variables and you have humans and you need raw materials and things need to be cut and built and sewn and it's not that dissimilar. So it's been really interesting. I've been here five years now and learned an astounding amount about the uh, new home market. Um, It's super exciting. And I I have an in-house team of 13 people who are awesome. Elisa, I think that's fascinating that you see the manufacturing piece of building is very similar to other manufacturing processes. But the more important question I have is where does Shell Brothers get their t-shirts now for their staff? So I've upped our game. I've definitely upped our fashion game. The, the stuff I'm putting logos on now, people are like, oh, wow. 
Yeah, we have a t-shirt for everything too. Every event we do, we do a t-shirt. Have you considered velvet blazers? I mean, hey, you know what? Next holiday season, I think that's on the table. I think velvet blazers are on point. I don't know anybody else doing it, so you got to do it. Yeah, I love it. All logoed up, I'm in. <laughs> oh, Kevin, can't take you anywhere. <laughs> Greg, did I hear that right? 13, did Elisa say 13 people on her team? Yeah. That's definitely something we got to unpack a little more. Tell us more about that team, how you've structured it and sure. what those folks are doing for you. So I have three videographers, a senior photographer. One of my video guys can also photo. I have three senior graphic designers. I have a production artist who's also a graphic designer. I have a programmer, web designer. I have a digital marketing specialist. So I've got like, what would I call her? an event planner. We do a thing called Project Kudos and she runs that for me. And she runs all of our Project Kudos social media and all of our coffee house social media. She's head cheerleader. She's awesome. Who am I missing? Oh, I have a renderer in staff. That's a new addition. He's awesome. Super exciting. I think I got everybody. Now, are you doing interiors and exteriors or just exteriors? Renderings? Both. You're doing both. Nice. Okay. What about virtual tours? You're doing virtual tours? Yep. Yeah. Rendered or Matterport or both? Both both. And do you have your own camera or do you hire that in? No, we have our own stuff. We have all our own equipment. So you guys are like, literally, you've got your own like action pack, you know, league of awesomeness. I do. We kind of look at ourselves as this like maverick ad agency, right? And our client is Shell Brothers. I'm going to say you're bigger than a lot of ad agencies with 13 people. You are. <laughs> oh, we are. We are. Yeah. The cool thing about them is they're all so incredibly good at their job and talented. And we all bring different things to the table, which makes it really fun. We love collaborating together. We'll just sit right outside my office is like a bullpen, we call it. And a couple of people have desks out there and then we'll all just meet there, you know, and kind of say, Hey, I have this idea. How about we do this? And then we layer on. I think it's what makes us so great. You know, we all come to the table kind of with different skill sets and we layer that on and then we make this amazing stuff, which is really fun. So your ideas can come from the bottom, can come from the top. Yes. And then you just have to make sure that everything is kosher, it's above board, yeah. gets approved. Yes, we're a democracy. I love it. I happen to be the leader of the democracy, but yes. So when you came into home building, not really knowing the industry when you started, did you have this team already there or is this something that you've built out as part of your journey? Both a little bit. Chris Shell, my boss, who's the owner of the company, understands how important marketing is. If you come to Lower Delaware, you, I mean, we're going to hit you over the head. Like you are going to know who Shell Brothers is. We have 27 billboards on the highway. You're not missing us. So he's always known the importance of marketing. I had parts of the team. I definitely have built my team, I think, in the past five years, slowly. Ivana, my senior photographer, has been here since almost the beginning of the company. So she's seen it all. Most of the team's pretty new, and I've brought on board most of them. But, you know, we've always had an in-house marketing team. And they've always been so good. I think when I got here, they had gone through like a bunch of marketing directors, and everyone was a little gun shy to share their ideas. So when I got here, and I'm like, what is this thing? What is this that they already done? And they're like, oh, no one liked that. Oh, that was no good. Oh, that's not on brand. And I'm like, what? Wait. So I like walked into Chris's office my second week and I was like, so everyone tells me what you like, but I don't, I don't think I care what you like. I like want us to be great. And he's like, yes. So we've always run like that. I'm like, let's not worry about what other people like. Let's make great work and then we'll figure it out from there. That's what we do. And I think we're pretty good at it. So I'm under the firm belief that like, if you're hiring for sales, you don't have to hire a salesperson. You need to hire somebody that just has a great personality that's willing right. to understand that there's a regimented process to it, as well as an understanding of uncovering problems that you can be the solution for. 100% agree with you on that. Do you feel that the same thing happened with you coming in and not knowing anything about the home building industry, that you could actually bring in a fresh set of eyes to say, why are you guys still doing this? Or what's the reasoning behind that? 
I don't think that was a uh, purposeful on anybody's part, but it yeah. certainly was true. And I mean, I think, you know, the first year I was learning like exponentially, right. I'm like, wait, what's an HO? Who's a CSM? You know, what's a CT? I stop people in meetings all the time, you know, executive meetings. And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. You need to back up a little bit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, I don't know what that is, but yeah, I, I was always asking questions because I didn't know the answers li literally. Right. I'm like, why are you doing that like that? What does this mean? And do we really need to be doing this? So I think there is value in that for sure. You know, I'm five years removed from that right now. And we talk about this as a team all the time. I'm like, let's look at this as like, we're in it. You know, we're living it, you're sleeping it, you're breathing it, which doesn't always give outsiders perspective on things. So we're always trying to look at things as what, what would the consumer think, right? If I'm the buyer, what do I think? And what's my reaction to this? Because when you eat it, sleep it, breathe it every day, sometimes you get bogged down in things that maybe don't matter to a consumer, right? With your market segmentation, do you find that you have an advantage and not to call out age or anything, but you did say that, you know, you basically did a reset at 40. Do you find that you have an advantage that you are basically a potential client of Shell Brothers of the product that you sell? Yeah. I mean, I a hundred percent am our clientele. My husband's 56. I'm going to be something this year. So Yes, I'm certainly our customer. And I think there's a lot of value in that. And, you know, how our customers view our product. My job is marketing, obviously, and our marketing for that matter, what people want and what excites people. And I'd like to think I had that senior view to that. So, Elisa, what was the strategy about bringing it all in house versus maybe partnering with some different agencies along the way? Was that something just kind of happened accidentally or early on? Was that always, this is how we do it here and why we want to do it this way? I think Chris has always been a firm believer in the importance of marketing. Sometimes he himself will be like, well, we're actually a marketing company that just happens to sell some houses. So he understands the value in having elevated marketing, which is really exciting. I mean, when you have somebody who builds houses, who understands that you don't get that very often. People were like, why do we need to do marketing? Even when we were so busy as every home builder was during the pandemic, he's like, Elisa, don't take your foot off the gas just because we're busy. He understands the value in that. I mean, I think our elevated marketing makes the brand more valuable, right? We're a luxury brand. That's how we market ourselves. And, you know, when we do good work, it makes the brand look good. Therefore makes you want to buy houses is my hope at least. <laughs> When I know when I've seen you guys put in for some of the nationals awards and things that you've won over, over the years, one of the things that you, seems to always pop up is your events. You guys seem to be pretty event heavy. Um, well, maybe, maybe that's just my perception, not living there, that you want to be part of the community beyond just selling them a home, right? You're contributing fun things to do and, and places to go. Is that a fair assessment? Very fair. We are incredibly community minded. You know, one of the things that we are constantly saying is we live here. We love it here. Our stakeholders in Richmond live there. Our stakeholders in Nashville live there. Like we love where we live. Our mission as a new home builder is happiness, believe it or not, above anything else. Like I said, we eat, sleep and breathe work. We also eat, sleep and breathe that mission. And with that comes really being involved in the community. And we did, I think I mentioned Shellville to you guys before we jumped on. We put on this huge Christmas festival for free at 6.6 .6 acres. There's the biggest roller rink you've ever seen in your life. And, you know, Santa's there every night. We have 18 artisan shacks. We have a food tent. We have a food truck. We have all these little houses that the kids can explore and play in. There's a live Christmas tree maze. We put up a lot of Christmas trees. I'll be honest with you. I saw all the social media behind that. And at first I was like, what are they just sponsoring some kind of like little festival? And then I'm like, I think it's their festival. Our festival. Yeah, we did it all. That's crazy. Now, and it's all free. It's free. Yeah. It's the coolest it's thing I've ever been involved with. I could cry with happiness every night we're out there. We had nine engagements. I mean, the kids are just so happy. We had 104,000 people through the gates this Christmas season. So it's really cool. Well, next year, if you want Greg to dress up in a flying Elvis costume and, and parachute in, I happen to know that he has those talents to do that. At least one of us does. I don't know. I'm a yes. I'm a hell yes on that. But only if you come with him. I, I think Kevin may be confusing me with someone else. Oh, <laughs> I was looking in the mirror when I was saying yes. that. I just got my name and stuff. Kevin has jumped out of an airplane in his life. I have Never, not. Yeah. I, I, I will let you that. hover right over the roller rink shelf and we'll drop you down. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, all right, I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit. From a marketing perspective, right? Yeah, that's fun. It's great. Everybody had a great time. They're getting married. The kids are crying. They're laughing. Right. Are you selling any homes from it? 
I believe that we are. I, I don't want to say, you know, people aren't like, oh, I'm coming to Shellville, so I bought a house. But yes, I think we are. It's a huge goodwill for our community. Definitely, I think anybody who's been to Shellville, certainly if they're looking to buy a new house, they're going to look at Shell Brothers, I believe, first. And that's not the only thing we do. We do things like that 12 months a year. Not quite as elaborate, but so yes, I think it's part of our marketing strategy, honestly. It's great public relations. I mean, we do it because we want to also. It's not a PR play, but you know that definitely plays into it, right? Is it basically like the steroid version of sponsoring a Little League team or a gymnastics yeah. squad? You know, it's, it's not about necessarily the ROI on that expenditure. It's about infusing yourself into the community. Correct. Yes, I agree. You know, when we live in a tourist town, at least here in Delaware, if you talk to a local, I would say if somebody's like, hey, I'm thinking about building a house, who should I look to? I like to think because we do all these things, most people would say, oh, you absolutely have to look at Child Brothers. I believe that is happening. So it's pretty cool. Hold on, Greg. I got one more thing on this one. This one is one of my sticking points here. So you don't see it as a potential. You got to follow me on this one. So like I belong to a credit union and then my credit union will sponsor like the Fiesta Bowl, like some super duper football game and they spend millions of dollars to do it. And when I see that, I see they're spending millions of dollars of my potential dividends. Do you ever think that there could be a flip side of that? Or do you think it's truly that infusement in the community that it is so community focused versus just sponsorship focused? and it's ingrained in the community, you think that that is a major benefit? Really, I mean, you couldn't imagine it unless you've actually experienced it, I think. But the experience is so good that the only thing you could get out of it is goodwill. And, and that's why we do it. We're a little different than a credit union, right? Because we're taking your money and giving you a product, i.e. a house. So I don't think that people think about it like that. It was more devil's advocate, just trying to see if there was another side to that. And if you guys have considered that. No, no, I get but honestly, it seems like we're grilling you, but truth be told, I think it's fantastic. And I know that Greg does too, because as soon as you said, Sheldon, he's like all lit up and stuff. So, you know, that's, so that's why I wish sometimes we could have cameras on us because every once in a while, Greg just gets this, ah, you know, kid all excited. There's candy. I, I do. I do. <laughs> you do. No, I always look like that. Well, at least we do want to connect this back to some of your digital activities, of course, you know, because it's not the Home Builder Event Marketing Podcast. So how do you guys fit in digital into all the different things that you're doing? Sure. I mean, we do the obvious things. You know, we do Google ads, we do keywords, obviously Facebook, Instagram. I have a very large digital spend, honestly. I mean, that's where I spend the lion's share of my money now. I like it because you can track it. So you know what your return on investment is, which is... I think pretty great as a marketer, right? You know what you're spending for each conversion. I actually finally yesterday got the holy grail I've been looking for years and I got everybody who's bought a house in the past two years and where their point of entry was on our website. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like <laughs> digging into that now and I'm like, whoa, this is so good. I love the fact that you called that the holy grail. No, being able to totally connect back your marketing attribution all the way through to the sale is fantastic. It is very hard to do for a lot of people. So hard to do, right? I've been chasing this for years and it all came together finally. It wasn't magical either. It took a lot of energy and effort on a lot of people's part. I think if you're not spending money as a new home builder in digital marketing, you're nuts. It's the best way to target people and understand where your dollar is going. You can clearly track your dollars in that space, which is, I think, exciting for our marketers everywhere. And we're doing all kinds of new stuff. Obviously, geofencing has been around. We use that. We're doing some really cool retargeting stuff right now, where if you clicked on our ad, we're going to serve you another ad because we're tracking your unique cell phone, which is crazy, but it's true. <laughs> Do you find from the tying back to the events that you're able to get a lot of organic kind of digital activity, you know, especially social media related, where you don't have to pay for it the same way because of the events that you're doing? So this is a crazy, funny story. You know, we didn't do the event last year because COVID and blah, blah, blah. And we moved it. And, and this is the biggest we've ever done it. We've done it for four years, but this was huge. So we were just talking at an exec meeting the other day. And my boss, Chris is like, why was our traffic in December on the website triple what it normally is? And I was like, oh, that was Shellville. So yes, that is 1000% happening. And you're not talking like a spike in December. You're talking about the month of December. I'm talking about the month of December. Our traffic was almost triple what it normally is because of Shellville. I'm still sitting here going, the CEO knows what the website traffic is well enough to even see that. We send marketing reports. Yes. No, I think that's enlightening that somebody's in the data at that level. You know, you said he loved marketing. We might have to 
have an interview with him at some point here. Yeah, he's great. Can I give you a, a potential scenario here? You go back in the way back time machine, you're back designing and selling clothing and in fashion stores and somebody approaches you, but it's not a Chris Shell. It's a Carl the Builder. And he is not an established builder. He doesn't have that same budget. What would you do differently going into that role? I know you, you're a maverick. You're going to take that, that adventure and rock and roll with it. But what would you do differently when you don't have that budget? You don't have that spend. Where are you focusing your output to, your efforts? That's a tricky question because I'm in the land of being super spoiled here at Shell Brothers. <laughs> right? Yeah. I actually taught a class last year on this. And I think one thing that we've already talked about that I think is so important and people overlook is a great way to build your brand for almost free is community outreach. Aligning with important nonprofits in your area or important events in your area. And you don't need to be the head sponsor. What I always say is be the boots on the ground. If your whole team goes out there and does the event and you're handshaking and you're like, hey, I'm Elisa, I'm from Shell Brothers or I'm from Brad the Builder and you get to know people, I think that is huge and it's almost free, right? I mean, throw them 500 bucks if you can, throw them a thousand bucks if you can be the title sponsor, do it. But I don't think you have to. I think having your people strategically partnering with important events and nonprofits in your area is advertising that is so cheap it takes your time and energy, but it doesn't take your money. And I 1000% would always do that. So that would be my, my number one. I love it. Yeah. And people forget about it, which is crazy to me because they're busy and you're building houses and there's five of you and you're like, I'm just up in it. And these, this homeowner's mad at me. I got to get this done. I think being present in the community is such a game changer for a small business. And I mean, I was a small business in this community before, you know, when I had my store and I did tons of events downtown and I made sure everyone knew who I was, knew I was partnering with charities. I think for me, that's the cheapest marketing you can do. Then I would probably honestly find like a, a really good ad agency that I can trust to, to run my digital, especially if I'm a small builder and building houses day to day. How am I managing the digital space that is ever changing? I don't think I would try to tackle that myself. If I were a mom and pop builder with five or seven employees, I think it's too hard because it changes so fast. And you said you also have a coffee, you have a coffee tasting and a coffee bar, like where you have food and everything at one of your models. It's actually on 18 Rehoboth Avenue. So it's 10 steps from the ocean. Oh. It's an actual coffee shop. So you go in there, we have so much branding. There's my coffee house, Cubs. Here's my coffee house hat, which I didn't even try that. That was just sitting next to me for this. <laughs> you go in there, you can get coffee. We have a local roaster that we've partnered with. And we have some local bakery people we've partnered with. There's our employees in there. We have kiosks in there. So you can page through all our communities, all our floor plans. You can see what we're doing with Project Kudos in there. We have takeaways, you know, we have our model lookbook, our community lookbook. We have a huge map on the wall of where all of our communities are. So you're just getting immersed in the Shell Brothers brand. We're like a little cocoon in the coffee house. We had a builder here in Arizona that hosted, and it was kind of an, a crazy idea that this young marketer had. And she had them host a speed dating in this infill townhouse community. And they pre-sold five units at that speed dating event. So, and I was blown away. I was like, that's a huge success if you ask me, because they literally just host that. Do you guys host like pinochle tournaments? And Last weekend, we had a dessert flight with Spike Coffee and it was sold out. So you got three desserts and then we showed you how to make your own cake pops. It was so popular that we're doing it again this weekend because people were mad that it was sold out. And then next weekend, we have candle making and charcuterie in there um, and that sold out right away. So we're doing that twice as well. So we have an art show in there mid June where we sell a lot of swag in the coffee house. It's like part coffee house, part sales center, part retail store, which is probably the me, the retail store is all, that's old Elisa like creeping into <laughs> Shell Brothers. So we do all kinds of things. And my goal there or our collective company goal, if I sell like two houses or three houses a year from the coffee house, I feel like we're winning because we're branding. We're getting our name out. Every single piece of swag we have has Shell Brothers on it somewhere. So you're taking things home. This fun notebook, these flip-flops, this baseball cap that say cool things about the beach, but they also have Shell Brothers on them. And then we, you know, we hope to sell some houses. So it's pretty cool. And all of our kids work there, which has been a really cool byproduct that we weren't expecting. All our kids work at the coffee house. All of us who have teenagers. With your advertisements that you're putting out there and your various digital campaigns, and not to discount the community insurgents, if you will, 
but how do you actually differentiate with the other builders in your area about the quality of your build and the move-in process or whatever those differentiating factors are? How, how are yeah. you letting people know about that? I mean, we do campaigns focused around our unique homeowner journey all the time and our technology. You know, we have a patented shelter technology and we build our houses very differently than many other new home builders using two by sixes and all kinds of different things. Yeah. So we had a whole campaign last year where we talked about shelter technology. You know, it's science, but we brought emotion to the campaign. Our houses are built for the way you live. And we had all these little vignettes of people doing things like my girls were in a commercial and I have three daughters and they were like, using their curling iron and all the beauty products and using the electric and we're like, we're energy efficient, you know, somebody else's kids came in and they were like jumping on the bed and making a lot of noise. And we're like, you know, we're noise proof because we are using the shelter technology. So I like to bring emotion to all of our campaigns because I think it resonates better with people. So generally we're storytelling when we're telling about our unique home journey we're using homeowners, we're using our employees, but we're always talking about it. We have a proprietary software called Heartbeat. We have a bunch of smart people who work on our innovation team here and they develop the software that tracks the home build. It's pretty much like nothing I've ever seen before. And so we talk about that and get testimonials about that and incorporate them into commercials. We are always striving to do four big brand campaigns a year and then pepper in these product campaigns and community ads with those, but the brand campaigns are, you know, our big brain childs where we're sitting for months and strategizing. And so that's a thing we have a big one brewing right now. That's going to be really cool. <laughs> I, I'm starting to be concerned that your 13 people are understaffed and overworked and that you need more. <laughs> We work hard. We do. We always say like, this is a Shell Brothers thing. We work hard and we play hard. So yes, we all work really hard, but we love what we do. I think all of us love what we do. I've got a great team right now who's happy, which is awesome. The energy is contagious that we can feel just coming from you. So it's great. Thank I'm you. sure everybody feels that. Well, Elisa, we want to be respectful of your time. You've shared a lot with us today, but just a, a few more questions. What are you guys looking at as new things coming that you need to prepare for or are working on from a digital standpoint? What's coming next for Shell Brothers? I think the digital space is so hard because you have to be in it daily or you don't know what's happening. Wait, wait, could you say that again? There are a lot of marketers out there that do not understand this concept. They think, uh, we, we put these on our website eight years ago. They should still be good. Right, right. I mean, you have to be nimble, I think, in the digital space and be willing to adapt. I mean, for us, if something's not working, I'm like, dump it, move on. What are we doing? If you're small, I don't think you can do a good job at this because you need to have your eye on the prize all the time with this. Like you have to. I mean, I love some of this targeting. I don't know how long you're going to be allowed to do this, but some of the retargeting you can do right now is to me, totally mind blowing. I mean, I can, you know, ID your cell phone if you've looked at one of my ads and then serve you a, a, a drip campaign, right? So if you looked at my ad, let's pretend you're at the top of the funnel. I don't know how interested you are, but I know you, you looked and now I can serve you ads on your phone. Cause I know you looked that are dripping you information, which is really intriguing and exciting. I think as marketers that we can do this. So we're really dabbling and that's probably one of the, the newer things that we're doing. I love the OTT space, which is the over the top television where you can really still in that space, really target demographics. Unlike you can do even on Google now, because they have so many restrictions with targeting and, and new home now that I think things have really changed in that space which is unfortunate for marketers, but maybe good for consumers. So you always have to leverage all of that, right? Greg, that's our second guest that's mentioned OTT. I was kind of wondering if we would get to that based on the fact she's got three video folks on her yes. team. Are you doing some of that as well? That's where some folks get stuck is they don't have the production piece figured out right. to get the video in place quickly, easily change it, you know, update it, some of that. Although you don't have to be changing it and updating it all the time to experiment no, with it. I agree. I mean, we're right now dabbling with five second, 15 second, 30 second commercials, five second ones that you can't skip through. So you have to consume them in the YouTube space. They're being received really well. I mean, I like to think our ads are really unique and not boring. I thought we were going to win a gold award this year for this car ad. We didn't go to silver, but I don't know if you guys saw that one, but it was pretty cool. <laughs> Greg and I were hoping for gold for our podcast. 
We really were. We got we won a silver as well, but man, we were hoping for that gold. So I was hoping for that gold so so bad. It feels so good when you get them too. We got two last year, and I was like, guys, we're at least at three this year. We didn't get any. We got five silvers, so that's still good. Yeah. So I think the OTT space is really interesting to me. I think the spaces where you can target your demographics, right? I can target income, age, what you've been searching for, which is a little scary and crazy. You know, as marketers, this is stuff we love. I know who my customer is. And now all of a sudden I can really laser focus my marketing on them. How cool is that? So we're really excited about some of those opportunities that are new. And I I don't know how long for this world they will be, because I think they'll probably have some restrictions put on them. I think right now no one's watching, which is interesting, right? <laughs> so speaking of watching, Alisa, where where do you go to watch? What are your sources of new ideas? Well, so, you know, we love the Builder Show. We take a ton of classes at the Builder Show and expect everyone to do a write-up when they come back. And the core executive team, we dissect all of that and decide what's good and not good, not just in the marketing space, but in every space. The team's going to go to Inbound this year, which is Mm -hmm. a, a marketing conference. So we've not done that as a team yet. So we're really excited about that. And then we're, I'm like a consumer of information. So I will read like ad age, start to finish. I'm always you know, online, like, oh, what is this? What is that? What is this? Lately, really interested in the metaverse space and what that's going to look like for home builders. We have some cool stuff we're thinking about there. And the team, you know, I have a young team. They know more than I do about some of the newest stuff. They'll come to me and be like, have you ever heard of this? And I'm like, no, but what is it? You tell me. I think having youth on the team is really great. They're on top of all these fresh ideas and how people are consuming content and things that I'm a little older. We tend to get set in our ways. I have to be mindful that I can't be set in my ways because we're in this ever-changing space as marketers. So I'm definitely listening and leaning into the team too, because I got a bunch of 20-something year olds who know stuff. That's great. Well, as we as we finish up, do you have any last words of advice that you just want to get out there to the world to help them do better mm-hmm. with their marketing? I guess my only advice is don't think inside a box, right? Always challenge yourself and always put your consumer hat on. Do you think a floor plan is great? How do you convey that to the customer is what will make them think it's great, right? I'm like not putting a floor plan on an ad and being like, look at our great new floor plan because who cares? But if I'm like, look at the way our new floor plan lives, I think thinking like that is important as a a new home marketer. It's about the storytelling, about the emotion, about the connection. Yeah, I completely agree. That's great. That's awesome. Well, Elisa, if anybody wants to uh, get in touch with you, you know, connect, reach out. Email for sure. Elisa.Titus at Shell Brothers, S-C-H-E-L-L brothers with an S.com. And I'm happy to answer any questions. We'll drop a link to that in our uh, show notes as well. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us today. It's been a fun conversation. Great to get to know you better. And thank you everybody for listening today to the Home Builder Digital Marketing Podcast. I'm Greg Bray with Blue Tangerine. And I'm Kevin Weitz with Outhouse. Thank you for listening. To learn more about how Blue Tangerine and Outhouse can help you generate more qualified home buyer leads, visit bluetangerine.com and outhouse.net. If you've enjoyed our show today, please tell a friend, leave us a review, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Be sure to join us again on the Home Builder Digital Marketing Podcast.